I don't do those anymore because I <laughs> I don't set myself up to fail. I guess <laughs> right? You just get all disappointed. But what I do want to do is I want to. As I was thinking about that a little bit because of the new year and everything, I was thinking like God kind of reminded me as I was praying. You know, um, uh, it was a vision. It was a time with I spent with God when I first came here. And one of the first things He said was that my house will be a house of prayer for all nations. I'm like, yes, God, that's right. And then you know He told me a couple other things, and I wrote them down. And I still have them today. And and this year I just feel like God's really saying that my house is a house of prayer. And I'm like, yeah, God, I get it. Your house is a house of prayer. And Isaiah 56 is where that's where Jesus, where the it's recorded uh, by Isaiah. And it talks about if you read the whole chapter, um, and it's down go down to chapter set, uh, verse seven. It says, "And give them joy in my house of prayer." So sweet joy in prayer, right? And it says, "Their burnt offerings and their sacrifice will be accepted on my altars, for my house will be called." A house of prayer for all nations. And there's prophesied, and Jesus repeats that again. When, if you remember the story when Jesus went into the temple right before he was crucified, and the priests, the religious folks, were exchanging uh, money from uh, the coins that they brought from their countries to the temple money, and they were ripping people off. They were, you know, it was a different gold standard, if you will. So they'd come with their coins or their offerings to buy it to buy a lamb to be sacrificed for their, their family, and the priests were just ripping them off. And Jesus saw that, and he was distraught. He just, he remember he made a whip and actually cleaned it up, cleared out the temple. And I like that, uh, I like that kind of thing, but then I gotta, I know he did it because he, they were taking care of it. It wasn't that he would, it wasn't the point that he cleared out the temple was important, it was that the fact that they were ripping off the people. And he saw this was lost sheep, and those were his people, and he, he was just, Strong about that, so we clean the house a little bit. And he said then that my house will be a house of prayer for all nations, not a den of thieves, right? And so uh, it's something that's been in my heart for a long time. And then as I go back and I reread uh, John chapter 17, I see there that Jesus prayed for us that we would be one. He, he prayed for the uh, the ones that he that God gave him, the apostles. Then he prayed for those after. Do you remember this story? You got, got to show you. But anyway, I, I just go to John. This is part of what we pray on, on Saturday, uh, John 17, uh, verse 21. And so he prayed that we together, us, would be one. That we'd be like-minded. That we would uh, honor God. That because of our oneness and because of our love for each other, that the world would know him. Isn't that cool? So we have to love each other for the world to know that God is real. And that means we have to love all believers that came after the apostles. And this is the part where I struggle a little bit. Or just me, I guess. You know what I'm saying? How do I love people that are uh, different denominations, different uh, belief systems, different whatever, you know? And how do we really be an example to the world that we as believers are one <laughs> our unity, so they would know him. That's what it says in verse 21. That they would know him. Not know, uh, know a denomination, not know a belief system, not to know a religious organization, but to know God, to know Jesus, to know the love. And I can tell you what, that's, it's powerful. And as we uh, come together and, and try to uh, uh, bring these different uh, groups together, um, I I was like with Tina. We were watching the One Thing Conference. Anybody know what the One Thing Conference is? Does anybody know what it is? Just raise your hand if you know. It's it's um, in Kansas City. There's a, a group called uh, International House of Prayer. Look it up online, and they have a live stream 24/7 worship and prayer. And you can just turn it on and leave it go all night long. It's amazing to sleep to it. Um, so they have some powerful, powerful worship leaders. Some aren't so great, you know, they're just new at it. Others are really, really anointed and amazing. And I just enjoy uh, listening to that. And then they have prayer time through that. And the, they're, they started, I think, around 10 years ago. And they just, it's growing and growing. It's international. This year, what was so unique about this year that really touched my heart, and even Christopher texted me. Christopher and Emily were there. Dad, turn on. 
uh, one thing there, you know, he wanted me to see what's going on. And on the stage were about 10 or 15 different ministry organization leaders. Uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. Different um, denominations, if you will, all standing on stage together worshiping God. Amen? It was, it warmed my heart because God is doing what he put in my heart, but he's doing it everywhere. That we would come together as one so that the world won't get be confused about the message any longer. They'll know that it's all about Jesus. Amen? Come on, put a smile on your face. It's all about Him. And so I, I'm really excited about that. So let's, let's take a moment, if you will, uh, go with me back to the Garden of Eden. Can you do that? Do you remember the Garden of Eden? That's where God actually formed man in Genesis chapter 2. It, it said he, he, he created the heavens and earth. He made the... Uh, the animals, he made all the trees, he made all the plants, he did all those things, then he made man. And chapter 2, verse 7 says, he, he took some dust, he took some dirt, if you will. Uh, it's actually, the word, if you translate it out, is actually micro dirt. It's like the smallest particles of dirt. Dust. And uh, some translators say dust, some say dirt. So, I, But it translates out to like dust particles. He put them together, he formed this man in the image of God, get an image of, uh, uh, of them, it says. And then, after he formed this, this body uh, out of dirt, then he said, the Bible says that he breathed into man, and man became a living soul. God breathed into this dirt being, and it became a living soul. And I want to think about that just for a second. God breathed into him the breath of life. God put into man the, his spirit. Amen? God put into him his spirit, and, and man became a living being. He walked in the garden. He named all the animals. God thought it was, he was, a, he was, uh, it was not good for him to be alone, and he, he put the man to sleep, and he took a part of his side. Some translations say side, some say rib. It's just his side. Man is missing one rib anyway. Right? God did that. Reminding them the beginning. And when he took the side of the of the of the man, he formed a woman, and he he said when he was finished that it was good. Amen. This man and woman. And he walked with God in the garden. They uh, took care of the garden, I would think. I think God taught us, taught them, you know. Here's this plant, this is how you prune it, this is this plant, you gotta take care of it this way. God, uh, walk with man every day. What a, what a great thing to walk with God every day, amen? No guilt, no sin, no, oh, I messed up, nothing. They just walk with God. Perfect, perfect, amen? Do you remember that? It's gonna be like that again. No guilt, no sin, no, oh my God, I messed up. Nothing. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be awesome. Okay, I, I, I just can't wait. Amen? And then we know what happened. We know that sin entered uh, man. They were deceived by the serpent. Chapter 3. We know that uh, because of that, their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked and they went and hid from God. And then the man started blaming the woman for everything. Do you remember that? The woman that you gave me, she's the one who gave me that the fruit, and I ate it, and now we're like we are. And God grieved. God grieved. And it says that when they, sin entered them, knowledge came to them. I believe this happened. The Spirit of God left them then. And God said, you can't be in this garden any longer. And you know what he did? He put an angel with a big sword protecting the garden so the man could not go back into the garden and eat of the tree of life because if they read of the tree of life, they'd be in that condition forever. And man left there after God did what? He sacrificed the lamb, made clothes for the man and the woman, and now they had to toil and work by the sweat of their brows, they're going to have pain in childbirth because of that, women are, and that's going to be part of their lives 
forever until we get to eternity. I want to go back to the, the spirit part, though. And that's what I want to talk about today. God, when the spirit left mankind in the garden and sent into their lives, man, up to this point, is not acting in a normal state. I've not ever heard this before. Man and women were made to have the spirit of God in them. That's how God made them. The Spirit of God is supposed to be in them and help them and direct them and give them peace. And like we read in, 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 uh, in Galatians, and love and joy and patience. All, that's supposed to be normal for us. Can you say amen? amen? That's the way we're supposed to be. Walking in the Spirit. Walking with God. Because God, when that sin, when, we reckon, when sin entered, then the Spirit of God had to leave. And then they were cast out of the garden. And ever since then, God is trying to restore man to that, that relationship that he had in the garden. Because God created you and me for his pleasure. Amen? He enjoys talking with us and communicating with us. God loves that. Father God wants you to come and sit on his lap, if you will, and read a story to him. Amen? He wants to be with you. Amen? He wants to be a part of your life. He desires that we fellowship with Him. And since then, now think about this. Now, he decided then that the man was going to bruise the head of the serpent, right? Do you remember that part in, in 3.16? And from that point on, we knew that man was going to come through the seed of a woman. This man that was going to come was going to be the savior of the world. Amen? And God planned from the beginning that we would be rescued. Can you say amen? That we would be able to be restored to that relationship that he had before. So God chose back then that through the human being, he was going to send his son. He didn't send his son through a frog or a bird or any other means. He chose then that, the now think about it, the creator of the world chose the human being because he wanted to be with us. So he sent his son to die in a human form. The deity the of Christ, we know that he was before in the beginning, but he sent his son to die and become a little baby boy, helpless, if you will, but God chose to be that his son, Emmanuel, God with us through this little baby. And we know he grew up and he died for the sins of the world. I said, well, Pastor, I know all this. I hope you do. I know all this. But something happened. Not only did he send his son to be in human form, he also sent his spirit to be part of that human form. Now think about that. And I talked about it a little bit earlier. But God sent his son to be in the human form and died for us and that all our sins could be forgiven and even provided our healing. Can you say amen? He even provided for us if we have sickness. I remember just a couple weeks ago, laying on my bed, moaning and groaning with the flu. I couldn't even think straight. I was, I was hot. I was cold. It was terrible. I just, all I did, I remember my son, Christopher, remember in California, crying out, Jesus. I said the same words. All I could say was Jesus. And I was just shaking. And I just kept on saying the word Jesus, I think for a whole day, until the next day before I became well, or at least uh, be able to hear it enough to understand well, I was still in my bed. I mean, I was just that sick. Went to a, a Christmas party with my family in uh, Waukesha. Uh, most of us got the flu, uh, type A, whatever, flu, flu, so everybody, a lot of people were sick. But a lot of people turned to Jesus instantly because of that too. So praise the Lord. <laughs> Jesus, I'm praying for you. It was, it was great. I kept on telling my <coughs> sister, who's, my sister's one of those girls, uh, ladies that are, this is recorded, right? So I have to be careful. Uh, she's like a little, you know, loud. She's the oldest sister, so she's in control of everything, you know? 
And uh, she used to tell me that Nick came, I said, my nephew from, from Chicago, and he brought the flu up, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, don't, I said, don't blame, I, I remember, I was laid down, I was in the bed, you were talking on my cell phone. I said, don't blame him, it's not his fault. Because he's not a Christian, and, and you know, to put all that on him would be terrible, and he doesn't need it, he didn't, he didn't need that from us. All he knew is it's okay, you know, hey, we all get sick, and we're gonna be, he's gonna be okay in a few days. I was, uh, I don't know why I said all that. We were talking about Jesus, and she cried out. Cried out to Jesus, okay. yes. I was, I was just like this, I didn't know what to do. But, uh, we, we, uh, when Jesus, some of the last things, was, right before Jesus' death, He said to his disciples, because he knew his disciples were going to be challenged and they were going to be tested. And he said, listen, don't worry. I'm not going to leave you alone in this world. I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you a teacher. I'm going to send you somebody to help you because the challenges that you're about to face is going to be too much for you to do in the natural. You're going to need the supernatural. You're going to need the spirit of God to help you. And at that time, he promised, you go back to read John chapter 14 and 15 and 16 and see how Jesus described the Holy Spirit to his disciples so they would begin to believe that they're going to have help. He says, go and tarry in Jerusalem until you've been endued with power. You, this dynamite power comes on you, and then you're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and throughout the whole world. Amen. And we're the whole world. We're part. We're fulfilling that part. Amen. But even like the disciples, we can't do it on our own. We need the Spirit of God to be in us and recognize the Spirit of God is in us, so we can do the work that God's called us to do. What is God telling you to do? Be a good dad. Be a good mom. Amen. Be a good teenager. Be a be a good worker at your work. Be a representation of Christ. When you go to work, you're not working for yourself. You're working for God. And everything you do reflects that, believe it or not. Oh, she's a Christian. Look at it. She's late for work again. Right? She, she, she always punches in early and leaves early or whatever. You know? I mean, people see that stuff. We need to overcome every situation because the Spirit of God is in us. It gives us power not only to be a witness every day. Come on, I don't know what that means, right? What does it mean to be a witness every day? But when I don't know what to pray, the Word of God tells us that the Spirit of God helps us pray. How many have get stuck praying? I know I should be reading my Bible because pastor said I should read my Bible every day. And i got a reading chart now to help me do that. Right? And I know I should pray every day, and I should be praying for my loved ones first, and then I should pray for my church family, and I should pray for those else that are around me that are unsaved, but I just get tired of praying sometimes. Is that just me, or is that everybody? Come on, I'm trying to be real. 2014 has to be different. See, 2014, we have to look at this and understand that God didn't leave us to do this thing called life by ourselves. He gave us the Holy Spirit to help us through life. And I don't know about you, but I want to know more about the Spirit that's supposed to be in me. Because when I first believed, it says He deposited the Spirit in me. And then I, I believe that we are baptized in the Spirit of God, that we may be witnesses for Him. So there's power in the Spirit, amen? And we need to walk in this Spirit. How do we do that? Because when I read the Word of God, I don't understand some things. How many read the parables that Jesus would be recorded by Matthew, Mark, and Luke? I mean, it, sometimes it's just, I don't understand it. And I read it over and over. God, this, this is God, there's no hidden secret here. I want to know what this means. And, and all of a sudden, you know, okay, I didn't get it. So I just go on. And then next time I read it, I get it. I don't understand that. It's the Spirit of God that helps us and teaches us to understand the Word of God. Amen? Why? Why do we need this? Why do you need it? Why do I need the Spirit of God? Because we can't, by our own fleshly desires, we naturally go astray. Come on, am I talking to anybody here that's real? Come on. When I try to do this on my own strength, I just fail. Over and over again. And I struggle to try to make it right. 
But it tells me when I walk in the Spirit, the Spirit of God is walking with me. He said He will lead me to truth. He will guide me in my everyday life. He'll be there wherever I am. What we have to do to 2014 is, is acknowledge that the Spirit of God is in us. And so go back to go to Ephesians chapter uh, 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 Galatians chapter five again. Chapter five, verse um, twenty-two. Now this is the fruit of the spirit. So this is in us. This is in you and me. Now we can acknowledge it. Or not acknowledge it is fine, but we, if we acknowledge it, then we know it's in us, and then we can say we we can speak to it. I, I heard this for the first time. I've never put it together. You know how you just study the Word of God and you want to present it. I don't know. I minister like this, so I want to. I want you guys to get this, and maybe you get it, and that's good. Uh, I don't know. I, it takes me a little bit longer, so let me explain it a little bit more. Is that okay? But you have to look at it this way. If the Spirit of God, the, Ho the Holy Spirit is in you, right? What, what is in charge of the, the earth and the atmosphere around us? What's in charge of that? The enemy is. All right? The enemy is in charge. We won't talk about it too much. But the enemy is in charge of the, 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 the atmosphere. And the Spirit of God is in you. And the Spirit of God is in you, you can overcome the temptations of the enemy. Because the power of God is in you. So whatever temptation comes your way, we can overcome that. We can't do it by ourselves. Because we're so easily tempted. Come on, you can get into... I don't, I don't, I don't expect anybody here in pornography here, but I just wanted to say that. So you get people in pornography, right? They got a computer in their office. They got an iPhone you can get anywhere, right? I mean, this stuff is so easy. All you have to do is go click one, two thing, and you're there where you're not supposed to be. Amen? Come on. How do you overcome that? You can't do it on your own. You need God's help. And the Holy Spirit is right there for you to guide you out of that. It does take repentance, and it does take ask God for forgiveness. But look at look at this uh, chapter in verse uh, Galatians chapter uh, five. If you go back up to verse sixteen, it says, "So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature." What's the sinful nature? Back in the garden, when Adam and Eve sinned, that sinful nature entered mankind, and ever since then we've been desire, desiring to fulfill our sinful nature. I don't care if you've been a Pentecostal preacher for 50 years, you've still got a sinful nature you've got to deal with until this all becomes new when we get to see Jesus. Amen? So we're all battling those things. We can overcome those things through walking in the Spirit. For the sinful nature desires what it con is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit is what is contrary to the sinful nature. Now think about this. You are constantly battling fear and things of this world because contrary to your the Holy Spirit that's in you. So we're in a battle sometimes. But I'm going to tell you, we win the battle if yes. you just submit yourself to the Spirit of God. Amen? You're a winner. You're an overcomer because of Jesus. Amen? So don't look at this like, oh my God, we're, we're in this constant battle. We're not going to make it. No, we make it. This, the writer here is saying, listen, you, you're fighting, but you're overcomers. Walk in the Spirit, not after your flesh. Don't walk after your desires, because your desire is going to take you down the wrong road. Yes? Amen. Come on. So, so but the, the, the desire that God has for us today is to walk in the Spirit, so we don't do what's in verse 19. It says, verse 19, the acts of the sinful nature are these, and they're obvious, and you can read them for yourself. And it says, the, the second part is, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So what does that mean? So if you walk after fulfilling your sinful nature, which is everybody in the world does. But I want to remind you of this. God doesn't look at that anymore in your life, right? He doesn't look at all the things you do wrong. He's saying, come on, sister, come on, daughter, come on, son, come to me. And those things always seem to disappear. Draw unto God, and He draws unto you. 
Seek after him, and you will find him. Amen? So you don't have to go, you can seek after God. When you're going through struggles and trials and you got stuff in your life, you go, you got to stop looking at that because that's what Adam and Eve did. Look how messed up we are. So they went and hid. And man's been hiding from God ever since because of their sin or their lack of faith or whatever. Don't hide from God, but go to him because he's saying this to you. I love you. You're my daughter. You're my son. Let me provide a way for you to get away from that struggle, get away from that trial. Just accept the blood of Jesus, my son, and you won't have to deal with that any longer. Amen? The hurt of your past can be di diminished by the love of God that's in your life. Yeah, I went through those things. I got, I got hiccups in my life too. But I'm still seeking after God. And when I do, he doesn't bring all that up. He does not bring up anything in my past ever. And he doesn't do it for you either. All he does is say, come. If you're tired and you're heavy laden, come unto me and I'll give you rest. Amen? He didn't say, get away from me because the way you are, because he provided a way through his son Jesus. That's walking after the Spirit. And that's knowing that the Spirit of God is in you, because the Spirit of God is drawing you to God, the Father. Remember, Jesus said, I'm going to say only what I hear from the Father. This is, this is good stuff. Listen. I'm only going to say what I hear from the Father. The Spirit is going to come, and He's going to hear only, He's going to only tell you what I said and what the Father said. So all three of them are in agreement. In the end goal, if you will, the prize, running the race to the end, is being in the presence of God the Father. Amen? No longer that we have to be in the outer court. You know the court, right? The outer court. We don't have to be in the court of Gentiles. We don't have to be in the outer court. We don't have to be in the, the holy place. We are right in the throne of God. Because when Jesus resurrected, he tore that temple curtain from top to bottom, and now we have access to Father God. Not because of our sin, but because of the Spirit of God in you, because we said yes to Jesus. The power of God is in you. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. The power of God is in you to overcome, to be a witness, to do the things. That's what I want to do in 2014, saints. I want to go past looking at us and our mistakes and start looking at what the heart of the Father for the city of Madison. Amen? And it means with the resource that we have, we're going to spend on touching somebody for Jesus. What does that mean? I don't know. But every one of us have, when I said that, have a thought. Does that mean you have to bring them here on Sunday morning? I don't care if you bring the church on Sunday morning. You know what I care about? You touching that life for Jesus, praying for them, and seeing them accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That's what, you come back and tell me that, I'll be so happy. It doesn't matter if this church is ever full, if you guys are touching life for Jesus. Amen? Come on. That's, that's work. That's like, that's, that's getting out of Sunday morning and saying this is not about, church is not, a, church is not this. This is not church. Church is when you're out there touching the life for Jesus. That's church. Where two or three are gathered in the name and, and there you, by the Spirit of God, you're led to somebody and you talk to them and you share with them uh, what God's been sharing in your heart through scripture and their life is changed because you were kind to them. Like Jesus was kind to you. That's church. That's powerful, amen? That's life. Hallelujah. It's exciting. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I remember one uh, person that got saved this year. Uh, it, it was, I had nothing to do with it. And I remember uh, coming and standing over here, right? And, oh, man, it was so marvelous. And he said to me, he says, today... I'm a Christian. Whew. The angels of heaven rejoice, it says in the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is doing that and he's going to do it through you. Listen, today, if you're, let's just bow our heads just for a second. Let's just, no music, honey, let's just be real with Jesus. We can, we can save the, uh, the ambiance. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is in you and me today. He's here he's talking to you right now. And listen, I don't, know what going, I don't know what's going on in your lives. I don't know what you're dealing with. But I want to reassure you today that God knows what exactly it is. He wants to heal it. He wants to deliver it. He wants to set you free from it. He wants you to bask in his love. He wants, he wants you to know today that you are his daughter and you are his sons. 
Hallelujah. And if there's anything that you need to confess to him today, right now, why don't you do that right where you're at? Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me. And, what, and you fill in the blank. Lord, forgive me of unbelief. Forgive me of lack of faith. Forgive me for not being a good witness for you. Forgive me for being selfish. Forgive me for, for thinking of myself highly more than I ought to. Forgive me for being selfish with my finances. And forgive me for not believing when I know you're the one that can heal my friend. Hallelujah. Father, forgive me for saying those mean words. Father, forgive me for a bad thought pattern. Lord, forgive me for walking into places I shouldn't be walking into and touching things I'm not supposed to be touching. Father, forgive me. Hallelujah. And accept right now the, the blood of Jesus over those situations. To say, I, I receive your forgiveness in Jesus' name. I am free from them in the name of Jesus. Satan, you have no authority over me any longer because Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Hallelujah. I will listen, I will listen to the devil. I won't listen to my flesh, but I'll listen to the Holy Spirit that's in me. And I'll walk in peace. And I'll walk in joy. And I'll walk in love. And I'll walk in forgiveness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'll walk with patience, Lord. I'll walk in kindness, goodness. I'll walk in faithfulness and gentleness, self-control. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, allow me to recognize the Holy Spirit within me. In Jesus' precious name. And everyone said, Amen. Man, praise the Lord. I want to do this before we close. We're going to go downstairs here in a minute. Um, I've seen Rajiv and Richard back there getting stuff ready for Jonathan's second birthday. And uh, please stay for the food. I think he bought enough food for 25 people, so I'm sure there'll be plenty uh, for us to eat. But um, if you have a physical thing in your body that you want to be touched by God today, would you just raise your hand? You want God to touch you in your physical body. You want it all? Any other prayer need that, we, that you might have on our prayer for before we go? Any, anything else? Yes? Can we pray for God? Um, he's down in the shelter and he just drank into the empty. So and his name is Guy? Yeah. Okay. And you know him from just. He was in heaven for mine. Okay. So this is the, the one that was living in your home. Okay. So we're going to pray for Guy, all right? Anyone else? So Guy is not all like homeless now because of all that, right? Doesn't have a job. Come on, how many of you have ever heard of that stuff? That's because that's pretty common. But you know, the God, I've seen God change people like God. And he, if we pray together, he can touch, touch them. Why don't we do this? Um, let's stand together for God on his behalf. And let's, why don't, why don't you pray? Can we do that? Can you pray? Who would like to pray for God? Anybody? I'll close. Who would pray? Come here, Angel. Come on, pray for God. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Anyone else want to pray? We pray for this man that's homeless, that doesn't have a place to live. Who's, you know, I'm sure they have, this week they'll have shelter through Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm sure, because of the cold weather. But then after that, he'll be on the street, so uh, no food. He's so discombobulated, he may have left the shelter last night. Yeah, so. I mean, it just gets so cold. A lot of people are not, they're, they're not, they're, he's not in his right mind. we got to pray for that, right? Just how you renew your mind. Uh, you renew your mind through the Word of God. If you're not open to that, then it's hard to receive that. So, anyway, we need God to touch him, brother. Can you pray for him? Father, thank you. Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before your throne here today, Father God. Father, we come together, Lord, as a as a body, Lord. And, and, and Father, we ask in your name today, Father, that you today, Father, will reach your hand out, Lord. Extend your hand out and touch this man, God, Father God. Today, Lord, 
We stand in the gap, God. As we were called to today, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have put it in us, Father, that you have given us this prayer request today for God, Father God, because we believe, Lord, that we, he needs a special touch from you today, Father God. Father, we pray, Lord, that the chains are broken today, Father. Father, we pray, Lord, that the same God, the same God that delivered me from addiction, Lord, that delivered me from the streets, Father God, that same God would touch God today, Father Lord. Father God, we just ask you, God. You are the all-powerful, the almighty God. All should die, Father God. We declare and decree, Father God, Hallelujah. that you will deliver him, Lord. Deliver him from addiction, God. Deliver him from anything that he has, Father God, that is not of you, Father. Satan, you have no authority over this man, Father God. We claim that in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we claim, Lord, yes, that you will touch him, Father God. Break the chains, release him from the bondage of alcoholism. Whatever it is, Lord, the things that are going on in his life, Father God. Father, we pray that you replenish his mind, heal his mind, cure his mind, Father God. Begin to touch his body, Lord. We pray for deliverance for this man, yes, Father God. Father, we pray that a door is open, Lord. That a door is open that someone shall come into his life that can minister to him, Father God. That can nourish him in your word, Lord. Father, we pray for someone to step into his life, Lord. That he will listen to, Father God. We pray that wherever he is today, Father God, that he will feel this prayer, Father Lord. That it will drop him to his knees, Father Father, we pray that your spirit, Father, surrounds him right now, Father oh, yeah. God. He is overwhelmed, Father, as we come together, Lord, and stand in the gap for this man, Father God. Father, we pray and we thank you, God, that you have placed that in us, Father. We pray that, that we thank you, God, that, that, that you allow us, Lord, to stand in the gap as leaders, Father God, to us, represent your kingdom, Father. We thank you for that, Lord. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, uh, we'll, we'll close here. Uh, so my thought, my thought was while I was praying, like, okay, so what are we going to do about it? It's a challenge to you. This is what I teach my, I try to teach my family too. But so we pray, now what are we going to do? It's nice that we pray. We pray to God. Right, right. What are we going to do about it? Right. I, don't, I don't need the answer. I just want to leave with that thought. You know, we go take some tough suit down there for them, or some clothes, or find them a place to stay, or you know, what's next? Just think about that. Amen? So, actions to our prayers, and then we'll see the kingdom of God advance. Amen? Hallelujah. I don't know if you'll guilty or not, but come on. Don't do that. Just think about that. Amen. Think about that. Now we pray for God. You know his name. We know his name. I don't know what he looks like, but we'll find out. What, what do we do next? Or do we do anything? But we need to know what the Spirit of God said to do. Amen. So if you have a thought about that, let me know. And, uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you for coming today. Um, I really believe that this is going to be a good year for us. We've been through some stuff, amen. I just really feel like this is going to be a little time of freedom as we pray for the setting that song for us to do these type ministries that will actually change the life of the kingdom of God. Amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Let me pray a blessing. Father, I pray your blessings over each person that's here today. God, I pray that revelation from your word will, be reveal, will reveal your son Jesus. I pray, God, that as we walk in the spirit, God, will obey the spirit of God and not obey our fleshly desires and be stronger for it, Lord God, that this year, Father, we walk in victory. Father God, I thank you for healing over this congregation and peace in Jesus' precious name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Don't leave. Go downstairs and uh, love on.